Welcome back, everybody. If you're on, please put your video on so we can see you. So anybody go to Jack's? <laughs> <laughs> I know. I miss my trips out to lunch. I know. I was thinking about that, too. I was thinking about gelato. Uh -huh. <laughs> I don't think they're open. Yeah. <laughs> you might be able to do drive-by pickup. Right. Or a Grubhub. <laughs> There's a Jack's within walking distance of my house. And oh. it did close, but it reopened this week on Tuesday. Yeah. So we will pick up takeout from them to support them. <laughs> Great. It took us a while to feel comfortable with takeout food, but we just decided who do we trust? Yeah. And uh, who do we want to support? I mean, we want to support everybody, but mm. yeah, we have to support ourselves too. <laughs> All right. All right. Are we missing anybody? I only see seven members right now. Bob, but you still have a few minutes, a couple minutes. Yeah, I'm here. Just uh, the video is a little challenging right now, but I'm here. So Bob is here. So. Um, I don't see. Katrina might be late, right? Because she's right. in another Katrina meeting. Still. Kathy, are you there? Not quite yet. What am I missing? Can you hear me now? Hey. <laughs> this <is> Kathy. Hey. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no worries, Kathy. I loved all that chat about the Wi-Fi nest. I'd never heard of oh. that. I had not heard of that myself, and I'm going to definitely look into it because, you know, well, as you know, with meeting after meeting after meeting and teenagers on their Wi-Fi streaming, downloading, you know, online learning, it's just nuts. Mm -hmm. And at certain times of day, it really gets bad. Yeah. Yeah, I had that problem, and, you know, our my base router is on the other side of the house, so... Basically, you have your router, and then you have your two um, sort of extenders as a part of the system, and it fully covers the whole house easily. And I'll follow now, through. In tech terms, that router now is called the AP. It's your access point. You need to be as close as you can to your AP. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't have to be close to it because it's basically everywhere in the house. Yeah, sounds awesome. Well, that's good. Yeah, because my computer, I actually started using my my home computer because it's hardwired into the network. But, of course, you know, all, the kids are doing everything via Wi-Fi. So even though I'm close, when they start jacking in, it just somehow it affects the ability for the router to kind of do its best. I don't know. Marty, are you present? Yes, I Hi, am. Marty. Okay, I think we can start. Terry, Cheryl, that's that? Okay. All right. I'd like to reconvene uh, the CO meeting, COA meeting of May 7, 2020 during COVID-19. Um, we're going to start the second half of the day uh, with item seven, which item seven is the report of program status changes. This item is divided into two parts. Part one includes items for action by the COA, which include requests to withdraw, request to reactivate inactive programs and or request to add a new content area to an existing program. Part two provides information on programs that have transitioned to revised program standards and programs that have elected to change to inactive status. These items are for notification only and require no action by the COA. No roll call votes here. So part one, sections A, B, and C. Part A is program withdrawals. There is one program sponsor withdrawing one program and that's Selma Unified School District, Preliminary Administrative Services, effective June 30th, 2020. Um, this section is for action. Sorry, I, I digress. Any recusals? Do I have a motion? Uh, yes, Member Alvarado. I so move that we accept the recommendation to withdraw uh, for um, San Luis Unified School District for preliminary administrative services. Request, I think it's a request. Yes, request. Okay, thanks. <clears throat> Second by Member Riggs. 
Uh, all those, um, oh, we will now do a roll call vote. In favor, say aye. Opposed, say no. Secretary, please call the names. Jose Luis Alvarado. Aye. Jermaine Bellatayo. Aye. Kathy Krisha. Aye. Katrina Kachowski. She back here. She's not here right now. Okay. Cheryl Forbes. Aye. Robert Fraley. Aye. Michael Hillis. Aye. Martin Martinez. Aye. Anna Moore. Aye. Gerard Morrison. Gerard Morrison. Do we need his vote for the motion to carry, Cheryl? No, I think we have enough. Okay. He's there. He's here. Sometimes his sound doesn't work very well. There he is. Do you want to give us a thumbs up or a thumbs down, Gerard? All right. <laughs> All right. And Iris Riggs. Aye. Oh, motion carries. All those, uh, thank you. Sorry about that. For I don't have all the members on one screen right now, so I have to go back and forth. Uh, all right, so section um, B is program requesting reactivation. There are no programs doing that. Same with uh, C, adding a new content area. We have no institutions requesting to add a new content area to an existing program. Part two are uh, sections D and E. They are for notification purposes only and no action is required. Mm. Uh, section D is uh, programs transitioning and there are no programs requesting, requesting to transition at this time. Section E, programs moving to inactive status. This is for notification only, no action is needed. There is one program sponsor moving two programs to inactive status. Azusa Pacific University, Preliminary Administrative Services Credential with intern and the Clear Administrative Services Credential. The item uh, failed to include the effective date for the APU inactive request, but both programs inactive date would be June 30th, 2020. And that concludes that part of Selma doesn't have a pass, they have a cask. Uh, point of clarification. Are we okay to move on? Aaron, nod your head. Um, that's it. Gay has just shared that Selma has a clear administrative right service. service. Not oh, a pass. Yeah. Not a pass, but a cask. So I think we actually need a new motion and another vote. Okay, let's go back to the Azusa does or Selma does? Selma. Selma. Okay, uh, Selma, the CASC program, effective June 30th, 2020, we need to vote whether to approve their moving to um, inaction. Withdrawal. Wait. Withdrawal, sorry. Uh, roll call, please, by the secretary. Did you have a question, Member Alvarado? No, I was just <clears throat> oh. wanting to confirm that indeed, because the document says preliminary, but it's actually a clear. Correct. Yes. Yeah. yeah, I was I was just looking up their their actual request and it is a clear. So thank you, Gay, for that um, catch. It's just a, a typo. Do we need a new motion or just a new roll call vote? Oh wait, hold on a second. Give me one second. Um why is that not there? Sorry about this, folks. Yeah, it's a clear. Okay. So I think you do need a new motion. Mm -hmm. Member Alvarado? So I'll restate my motion to say that um, uh, that we accept Selma Unified School District's request to withdraw their clear administrative services credential program Perfect. effective June 30th, 2020. Great. Thank you. And a second by Member Riggs. Secretary, please do a roll call vote. Jose Luis Alvarado. Aye. Jermaine Bellatayo. Aye. Kathy Krisha. Aye. Katrina Kachowski. Aye. Aye. Oh, she's there. Good. Yeah. Cheryl Forbes. Aye. Robert Fraley. Aye. Michael Hillis. 
Aye. Martin Martinez? Aye. Anna Moore? Aye. Gerard Morrison? Aye. Harris Riggs? Aye. All right, motion carries. All right, thank you. Well, it's so nice to have our audience paying attention, and keeping us on our toes. All right, let's, uh, let's go to item 19, which is the report of the accreditation team to the Santa Barbara County Education Office. Is everyone uh, in attendance for that? Have they been moved into the panelists? Yes, they have. Terrific. Consultant Karen Sacramento will introduce this item. Joining her is team lead, Carol Klaus, and institutional representatives, John Merritt, director, teacher induction program, Lynn Rosenberry, coordinator, teacher induction program, Dr. Leticia Bradley, director, leadership support services, Cassandra Bautista, director, leadership and program support, and Ellen Barger, assistant superintendent, curriculum and instruction. Does anyone need to recuse themselves? I have to recuse myself. Who's that? John. Uh, Donnelly. Thank you. You can turn off your video, please. All right, Ms. Sacramento, will you begin, please? Yes, I will. Good afternoon, COA members. As the state consultant, it is my pleasure to share the report from the Santa Barbara County Education Office site visit, which was held April 5th through 8th. This visit was conduct conducted via Zoom. And I'd like to thank Santa Barbara County Education Office for their tremendous support as they work to move all interviews to Zoom and to facilitate the smooth transition that allowed the visit to be so well run and so well organized. The protocols for this visit were all in accordance with the normal procedures and the findings from the visit are based on a thorough review of all institutional and program documents, as well as stakeholder interviews from across many groups and a wide geographic range. I too would like to acknowledge the exemplary SBCEO leadership team that's with us today and includes Dr. Salcido, Ellen Barger, John Merritt, Lynn Rosenberry, Leticia Bradley, and Cassandra Batista. This group provides strong and supportive leadership that is highly recognized and greatly admired across stakeholder groups. And they work together to provide programs that meet, meet both the standards and the contextual needs of the county and the candidates. I would also like to recognize the dedicated work and professionalism of the site visit team, Tanya Almeida, Amanda Bard, and Suzanne Borges, and the exemplary leadership of Carol Klaus as the team lead. Her calming demeanor, expertise, and guidance was evident throughout every stage of this visit. So I will now turn it over to Carol to review the program findings. Good afternoon, everyone. First, I'd like to thank you for the opportunity to serve as a site lead for the Santa Barbara County Education Office. It was a pleasure to represent the Committee on Accreditation. And I especially want to thank Santa Barbara County Education Office for their flexibility, because I know to find out two weeks before your visit that suddenly everything has to be restructured. They um, reorganized very quickly and everything went very smoothly. So a few highlights from our visit. There was a common theme throughout the interviews of all stakeholders that the county office does an excellent job in collaborating with everyone. Stakeholders felt they had a say. They felt like program leadership truly listens and is constantly trying to improve the way they um, do their programs. And we were worried since it was such a big county that there's gonna be a disconnect between North, South and Mid, but everyone was so happy with the collaboration and um, the truly connectiveness that the program does and making sure that all the districts, whether big or small, have an equal say. And in their recruitment, the past can cast candidates state that they pick Santa Barbara over other counties. And there's actually some that come from different counties to travel to Santa Barbara because of the quality program. And all stakeholders stated that the most significant aspect of the program is the consistent support from the program leadership. And this has had a positive impact on their teaching and their student outcomes. 
and the um, site administrators actually say we look forward to when the program comes to visit our school or our district. So after review of all the documentation, all the standards for the teacher induction, preliminary administrative services, and clear administrative services credential programs were met and all common standards have been determined to be met. And we have a unanimous recommendation for accreditation. Thank you. Any questions, I'll be happy to answer. Thank you for your report and for your service as a team lead. I appreciate it. Uh, right now, we uh, invite the institutional representatives to briefly comment about the visit. Uh, we remind you that this is not a time to dispute the team report, but to rather provide any thoughts you had about the visit. Institution. Okay, thank you, Ms. Barger. <laughs> Hi, I'm Ellen Barger. I'm Assistant Superintendent at Santa Barbara County Education Office. And I would like to take a moment to thank our incredible team and the support of Karen Sacramento and Carol Kloss throughout the entire process that we felt very, very well prepared but also through the questions that they asked and the support that they gave, it was an opportunity for us to really grow as a program. I, I will turn it to my directors of each of the programs in just a moment, but I would like to also just tell everyone on this commission that the process, the standards, we have been so impressed by them that the standards really align with everything that we are trying to do in California. So the work that we are doing across our credential programs aligns with what our districts are trying to do and that continuous improvement mindset and that continuous improvement approach um, just really allows us to do our work in a way that really is a support to the growth of our districts and the growth of our teachers and educators within the districts. So I will turn it to um, our teacher induction program, Director John first and uh, work through there. Thank you. Great, thank you, Ellen. Yes, we, we appreciate the visit. We, while the whole process was a great learning experience and uh, just, just a, a good way to keep improving as a professional. Um, we would have liked to have met everyone in person and have them meet our people in person, but it, it worked out quite smoothly. Carol was terrific and very um, easy to communicate with and also Karen. So um, we, we just appreciate them working with us on this and letting it happen because we put forth a lot of effort to get ready. We're glad we, we got you to meet our people. But next time, let's meet in person. Hi, everyone. I'm Letitia Bradley, the director of the PASS program, and I echo the sentiment of all of my colleagues. We really appreciated this process more than I actually anticipated. Uh, not only were Karen and Carol amazing, they were a calming force. When you can imagine, we were in a situation that we were not expected to be in. Uh, it also allowed us an opportunity to make what we do visible. A lot of the things we do because we're a small county, we just get the job done. But by going through this process and aligning our actions with the standards and making sure that other people can see everything that we do, it really affirmed the amazing things that we were doing and gave us targets for the future. So thank you very much. And our cast director, Cassandra Bautista, is having problems. She just fell off the call. So she's unable to share her thoughts as well. And so um, we would just like to say on behalf of the entire Santa Barbara County Education Office, how much we appreciate everything that went into supporting our accreditation. And um, we would love to support any other uh, organization or institution that has to go through this with Zoom because um, we learned quite a few things and we would love to share our experience. So thank you very, very much. All right, thank you for your comments. Um, I've heard a lot about your program and uh, it definitely serves as a model for uh, many other programs throughout the state. At this time, I'd like to provide the uh, COA members uh, opportunity to uh, ask questions or comments. Um, 
right now. I don't see anybody's hand raised. All right, Member Chukowski. You're, you're muted. Oh, unmute. Maybe I was no. on the lam the whole time. Yikes. Well, congratulations, Santa Barbara. Um, I, I just wanted to say that I appreciate Ellen's comments about the standards and their value in terms of continuous improvement. I, th I think that that's the goal of this whole process. And to hear you not only talk about that, but then evidence it in your report and give us a sense of why it is that you're this um, highly regarded program really kind of validates efforts to work together on behalf of the best state in the United States. So thank you for everything you do. If there are any other comments, um, then we need a motion, please. Um, motion by Member Tchaikovsky. Um, I move that we accept this report and its recommendation for accreditation. Second by Member Martinez. Uh, we'll do a roll call vote. Jose Luis Alvarado. Aye. Kathy Kresha. Aye. Katrina Kachowski. Aye. Cheryl Forbes. Aye. Robert Fraley. Aye. Michael Hillis. Aye. Martin Martinez. Aye. Anna Moore. Aye. Gerard Morrison. Aye. Iris Riggs. Aye. All right. Terrific. Motion carries. And we wanted to say congratulations and thank you to Mr. Merritt, Ms. Rosenberry, Dr. Bradley, Ms. Bautista, Ms. Barger, Ms. Klaus, and Ms. Sacramento. Thank you. Enjoy your summer. It's almost there. <laughs> All right. That takes us to uh, item 20. Are we ready for item 20? Everybody in the room. Thanks, uh, Ms. Clark. It's the report of the accreditation team to Fontana Unified School District. Consultant Hart Boyd will introduce this item. Joining him is team lead Christine Sisko and institutional representatives Audrey Weens, coordinator induction and credential services, and Adele Thomas, director of professional development and teacher support. Does anyone need to recuse themselves? I do. Um, Member Martinez recusing, recusing, please turn off your video. Thank you. Anybody else? All right, Mr. Boyd, will you begin, please? Yes, thank you. Montana Unified School District site visit took place from April 6th through April 8th. Due to the COVID-19 pandemic, the site visit was conducted virtually rather than in person. A total of 177 interviews were conducted with various stakeholders, and with the exception of it being held over technology, the site visit proceeded in accordance with all normal accreditation protocols. The team at Fontana USD was great to work with and they were all extremely thorough and thoughtful in their preparation for the visit. Joining us today and representing Fontana is Audrey Weens, Coordinator, Induction and Credential Services and Adele Thomas, Director of Professional Development and Teacher Support. Also joining us today via technology is Christine Sisko, Director of School and District Support at the Stanislaus County Office of Education. Christine served as team lead and was fantastic to work with and she was an extremely knowledgeable and thoughtful leader throughout the process. I would also like to thank each of the members of our site visit team for contributing their time and expertise to the visit. The team worked diligently in preparation for the visit and worked extremely hard during the visit. Finally, I would like to express my deep gratitude for everyone on the district side and each member of the site visit team who were able to turn on a dime and make this visit happen. I'll now turn it over to Christine, who will present the findings and the accreditation recommendation. Thank you, Hart. Good afternoon, everyone. First, I would like to thank Adele Thomas, Audrey Weens, and the Fontana Unified School District induction staff for their flexibility, organization, and availability. Accreditation visits are intense, rigorous processes that ensure that the education pr preparation programs meet the standards set by the CTC. Layer that with moving the visit to a virtual platform, that requires extra thanks. Audrey's dedication to com and commitment to the development of professional practice was evident throughout the review. The staff that she's been able to hire has further benefited the program and ultimately has exponentially increased the quality and capacity of that program. Growth mindset, 
and positive collaboration culture are pervasive throughout this district from the superintendent all the way down to the classroom. The well-organized interaction between human resources, education services, site administration, and the induction team is evidenced by their commitment to job embedded mentoring. They have developed a shared language and central focus on best teaching practices. The leadership in this district models the behavior and expectations for all educators in the district. The main thing that stands out about Fontana USD is the expansive impact that the induction program is having on the new teachers and the district culture in general. All common and program standards were met as evidenced through artifacts and or the interviews. Invest, investing in your teachers lets them know that they're a valuable part of the larger system and keeps everyone focused on the ultimate mission, which is serving students. The sense of community that has been established at Fontana Unified School District is a shared vision. An integral part of the site visit is to conduct those interviews and gather information regarding the program and perceptions and experiences of all the stakeholders. I'd like to share with you just a few comments collected during the interview process regarding the impact that induction has had on those teachers. One participating teacher said, quite simply, induction is a guiding light. Another, a second year, and I loved this analogy. Sometimes you jump into the deep end of the pool and you can't find the bottom. She is my bottom, referring to her mentor. She is my support. I can stand on her, but she doesn't do the job for me. A second year um, candidate also said, they find the good stuff in me, even when I know I'm struggling. And finally, this is the one that really tickled me pink. The induction program is like Mary Poppins bags. It's just never ending. With that, we would like to recommend that Fontana Unified School District's teacher induction program be fully accredited and it's outlined in the report. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Sisko, for your report. I, I was a, a wonderful ending. <laughs> you know, it, we've been in this induction um, business, if you want to call it, for years now, and uh, it's still, you know, so, so heartwarming to know what a difference um, the work of our predecessors who paved the way for induction, um, how it still continues to pay off. I digress. We now invite institutional representatives to briefly comment about the visit. This is not a time to do, dispute the team's findings, but rather to provide any thoughts you had about the visit. Hi there. Hi there. Hi. So I would like to start by first thanking um, Hart Boyd. He um, kind of walked beside us throughout the whole entire way. Um, lots of preparation, lots of hard work, as everyone knows. Um, I'd also like to thank um, Adele Thomas for her support. Um, lots, of, lots of balls in the air to kind of juggle um, getting ready for the site visit. Um, I want to thank Christine Cisco, especially for her flexibility and willingness to just kind of roll with the punches because doing it via Zoom was a unique experience. So, um, but I think I credit that to just the induction community and also to Fontana Unified um, in that, you know, flexibility in education is sort of the name of the game, right? So um, we just went ahead with it. And I have to say induction is my heart. Um, I truly believe in the work and um, I'm so happy and proud that everyone came together to do the interviews. I was having sleepless nights about that, but um, the process works and, and accreditation site visits, yes, they are um, stressful and a lot of work, but when everybody comes together at the end of the day, I'm just, I'm so proud of what we do. So thank you. Thank you for your comments. Ms. Thomas, did you wanna chime in? No? I go. just, uh, I just, duplicate what Audrey said. It was a great process and kind of, as we are always looking at ways that we can improve and better support teachers, 
the accreditation process gives us that time to reflect and get feedback on how we could improve our program. So it was a very positive uh, experience. Terrific. Thank you. Um, at this time, I will call uh, open open the floor. We don't really have a floor anymore. Open the screen um, to the COA to uh, ask questions uh, or make comments about uh, the report we just heard. I don't see any hands raised in the hand raising area. Well, I would say it was a really great report. If, uh, if you've got no questions, <laughs> it was very clear. Uh, that means we need to go to uh, a motion. Do I have a motion? I have a motion by Mike Hillis, please. Um, I'd like to move that we accept the report for Fontana Unified School District uh, for full accreditation. And a second by Member Balatayo. Uh, we need a roll call vote, please, Secretary. Jose Luis Alvarado. Aye. Jemeline Balatayo. Aye. Kathy Krisha. Aye. Katrina Kachowski. Aye. Cheryl Forbes. Aye. Robert Felly. Aye. Michael Phyllis. <clears throat> Aye. Anna Moore. Aye. Gerard Morrison. Gerard Morrison. Uh, I Iris, hear him. Iris Riggs. Aye. All right, thank you. Motion carries. Congratulations uh, and thank you, Ms. Weens, uh, Ms. Thomas, Ms. Cisco, and Mr. Boyd. Have a great day. Thank you. All right, that takes us to item 21, which is the report of the accreditation team to Kings County Office of Education. Consultant Bob Locks will introduce this item. Joining him is team lead, Adora Fisher. And, oh, sorry, that there was a note to me, no. Nope. Um, and institutional representatives, Joy Santos, Program Director, Curriculum and Instruction, and LaVon Chastain, Program Director, Induction. Does anyone need to recuse themselves? We Go don't on. have a Dora Fisher quite yet. She's not on the participant list, so I can't bring her in. Do we want to go to the next item and see if we can find? Bob, have you heard from Adora? Uh, no, I haven't. I emailed her uh, right after lunch, but I haven't heard anything back. Okay. So maybe we've got a 22 because I Yes, thought. they are all here. Mm -hmm. All right. Item 22, report of the accreditation team to the Association of California School Administrators. Consultant Gay Roby will introduce this item. Joining her is team lead Lisa Tywater and institutional representatives Margaret Artoffer, I hope I got that right, Senior Director, Educational Services, and Dr. Tracy Robinson, Educational Services Executive. Does anyone need to recuse themselves? All right, Ms. Roby, will you begin, please? Thank you. Good afternoon. The site visit to the Association of California School Administrators, better known as AXA, took place on March the 23rd through the 25th, during the very first week of the state's safer at home social distancing policy. So the visit was accomplished through technology and we couldn't have had it happen to a better candidate because as you know, AXA covers the entire state. They have a wonderful electronic uh, infrastructure. And so in five days time, they turned it around and accomplished uh, all online technology-based site visit. The uh, three team members, which were spread across the state from Stanislaus County through Orange County, uh, we reviewed documents, examined evidence, interviewed 217 people, and held their team meetings around those interviews through electronic formats. I would like to uh, pause a moment to comment on AXA's superb org organization and skill in accomplishing this. Each one of us were assigned a handler, for lack of a better, uh, a better term, 
who handled all the hardware issues for each of the team members. So as we had interviews, these folks opened the meeting, opened the meeting room, took role, told them the rules and left the meeting room. So if a link didn't work, they were also there to back it up as well and helped us through many a quick moment. Uh, the two ladies who are present with us today were also uh, their troubleshooting, their program director and their senior, senior director. And they did uh, their fair share of electronic first aid as well. The visit experienced no other extraordinary circumstances. And for a report of the team's findings, I'd like to turn over the microphone to our team lead, Lisa Tywater. Thank you so much and hello everyone. Um, I'm here to share the accreditation report for the Association of California School Administrators, AXA, their Clear Administrative Services Credential Program. And as Gay says, our team visited the program for a site review that took place March 23rd through the 25th. And the context, I'm, I'm hearing in the parade of everyone speaking to you what crazy context we did our visits in. And before I begin, I'd like to share that this site visit took place right in the midst of the COVID mayhem beginning across the state. This unprecedented situation impacted the stakeholders we needed to interact with, yet they provided time and focus to this accreditation process and gave great praise to their coaches and to the program leadership for supporting them with guidance as these new administrators navigated site closures, technology distribution, view food distribution, and transitions to distance learning. It was truly amazing. I want to give special kudos to Tracy Robinson and Margaret Arthoffer from AXA, to Gay Roby, our CTC consultant, and to the accreditation team of Beth Bythro and, and Kitty Fortner for their resiliency and their perseverance. I see Tracy's picture in here and she's still upright. It's amazing. I know Tracy had to revise our site visit schedule at least five times within a matter of days to keep up with the transition from an on-site visit we were going to do in Sacramento to a 100% virtual site visit on the WebEx platform. AXA has a statewide clear administrative services credential program with 560 candidates currently enrolled in one of 19 affiliate programs run by local program coordinators across the state. These local coordinators are guided through leadership bases based in Sacramento yet, and two other regional offices, yet report they feel well connected and supported in running their affiliate programs. Our team conducted 217 interviews with a variety of stakeholder groups and reviewed institutional reports, multiple documents, and various data sources. Testimonials from both candidates and coaches were overwhelmingly positive. From candidates, we heard things like, and these quotes I have to, I have to read to you. I'm not just jumping through hoops with this program. It's making me better at my real job. I'm going to be sad when it ends in June. Everything we're learning we can use today and tomorrow. Our coaches become our trusted friends. They help us celebrate our small successes and listen to our trials and tribulations. And to me, this next bullet is the highest praise of all. My coach is also my therapist. When he shows up some days, it's like, dude, I hope you ate your Wheaties because we've got lots to talk through today. Um, while from coaches, we heard comments like the program trains us that if they call us at midnight, we need to try and answer at midnight. It's a call for help and we cannot ignore it. Our number one job is to be a good listener and then respond in such a way as to cause self-reflection. I was a superintendent for 20 years. I'm not easily impressed anymore, but this program impresses me. Moving on to the results of the site visit, our team unanimously recommends accreditation for this program. We determined all preconditions to be aligned. We also determined all program standards for the Clear Administrative Services Credential Program to be met. In regards to the common standards, we determined all common standards are met but could not find consistent evidence for two areas uh, so that we deem them inconsistently met or points to grow on. Within common standard one, we could not find evidence that the program consistently, and I'm gonna read from the standards, ensures that faculty and instructional personnel regularly and systematically collaborate with colleagues in P-12 settings, college and university units, and members of the broader educational community to improve education, educator preparation. 
Through interviews with various stakeholders, we verified that programs hire many stakeholders who also serve in other P-12 settings. We found inconsistent evidence that these individuals were asked to provide regular and systematic collaboration with the ACSA program to improve educator preparation from that perspective. Within Common Standard 4, we were unable to find consistent evidence that, again, I'm reading from the standard, the continuous improvement process includes multiple sources of data, including one, the extent to which candidates are prepared to enter professional practice, and two, feedback from key stakeholders, such as employers and community partners about the quality of their program. While the unit does collect some data regarding perceptions of candidate performance levels, it was from a limited number of stakeholder groups while adequate feedback regarding the quality of the preparation from employers and community partners was not in evidence. Having virtually visited the program and interacted with numerous stakeholders, it is apparent that ACSA's Clear Administrative Services Credential Program is highly valued by all its stakeholders. Candidate complete and completers reported they experienced a powerful job embedded program facilitated and supported by incredible coaches. As a result, our team unanimously recommends accreditation for this program. Thank you for your time. Thank you for your wonderful report and your service. Uh, we will now uh, provide the institution with an opportunity to uh, briefly comment about the visit. We remind you that this is not a time to dispute the team report, but rather to provide any thoughts about what you uh, about the visit. I would like to uh, thank the site visit team that came to visit. They were incredibly flexible um, and did a, a thorough uh, conversations with all of our coaches and our candidates. Um, I think our program is very uh, important because we put such an emphasis on the coaching. And I would like to just publicly acknowledge how hard our coaches work in making sure that they're standing side by side with all of the candidates in their job embedded uh, field. And for the candidates who are working tremendously hard right now in the midst of COVID-19 um, and are doing a great job. Also to uh, Margaret Arthur for who has provided leadership uh, for our AXA Educational Services Department to create uh, wonderful leaders throughout our state. Thank you, Ms. Robinson. Ms. Arthur, Arthur. <laughs> Margaret, I just would like to um, start by thanking uh, Tracy and the team. That was an incredible feat uh, to rearrange and rearrange and rearrange this schedule literally through the day before. And Gay couldn't have been more um, helpful and positive throughout the whole process and saying, we can do this, let's get it done. And so um, it was a tremendous amount of work for Tracy to do in the background. And, um, and the entire uh, process was really, um, it was really wonderful from the other end. I've been on, a, um, on an accreditation team in the past and, it was just um, a very different experience and your team was very well trained. They were um, positive. They were um, great communicators and um, it was just a good process. So thank you to, um, to the team. Thank you to Tracy. And I want to just reiterate again, the work that the coaches do to support all of our candidates and um, the emphasis on that really truly in-person coaching, I think makes, um, makes a tremendous impact. So thank you. Thank you. Uh, at this time, I'd like to provide the committee on accreditation members an opportunity to ask any questions or make comments on the report. I'd like to ask what, um, what you're thinking about as far as addressing the two areas of um, growth uh, outlined by the site visit or the team lead. Uh, 
Uh, we're excited because we're always looking for opportunities for improvement. And while our program collaborates extensively with 19 local programs, many of our local program coordinators are superintendents, assistant superintendents. They work as faculty and other institutions of higher education. Uh, we feel that we do get a lot of input from the broader community through our local program coordinators, but there's always room for growth. And so systematically, we're going to look at um, making sure that our core local program coordinator meetings invite uh, other uh, stakeholders within the educational community um, so that we're constantly receiving input and um, learning and growing from everyone within the community. So we welcome the opportunity for changes. Uh, we just started initiating a very in-depth and detailed assessment process um, with our coaches and our candidates and our stakeholders. And we just need a little bit more time to fine tune that and make sure that as the report states as a systematic process, it's not just something that started um, it's something that becomes a part of what we do and, and how we perform. Terrific. Thank you. Any other questions or comments from the COA? At this time, I, there are no further questions or comments. We can have uh, take a motion. Uh, Member Balatayo. Oh, you're muted. We can't hear you. It was probably perfect too. <laughs> I'll try again. Um, I move that we accept the report and the recommendation of accreditation. And do I have a second by member Forbes? Secretary, can you please do a roll call vote? Jose Luis Alvarado. Aye. Jamaline Bellatayo. Aye. Kathy Krisha. Aye. Katrina Kachowski. Aye. Cheryl Forbes. Aye. Robert Belly. Aye. Michael Hillis. Aye. Martin Martinez. Aye. Anna Moore. Aye. Gerard Morrison. He's having technical difficulties. He logged on and logged off on a different computer. Oh, there he is. I hear something got logged on and logged off on a different computer. Yeah. Yeah. Let's see. He has no camera. Oh, he says he votes aye. He put it in the chat. Okay. Iris Riggs. Okay. Iris Riggs. Aye. Aye. Thank you. Motion carries. Congratulations uh, to Margaret, Dr. Robinson, Ms. Tywater, and Ms. Roby. Very successful visit. And as we expect AXA to always be at the head of everything in the administration, uh, it's uh, appropriate that you would have it at this time to, to lead the way. <laughs> All right, that takes us back to item 21, which is the report of the accreditation team to Kings County Office of Education. Is everybody here? So, Consultant Bob Locks will introduce this item. Joining him is team lead Adora Fisher and institutional representatives Joy Santos, program director, uh, curriculum and instruction, and LaVon Chastain, program director in induction. Does anyone need to recuse themselves? All right, Mr. Locks, will you begin, please? Yes, thank you. This is the accreditation report for Kings County Office of Education, which took place this past April 27th to 29th. Kings County did an outstanding job revising the schedule and making sure that all interviewees were present for the last minute change to a virtual site visit. The site team was well prepared and most, if not all, interviews actually had two team members on every interview. We had one new team member on the site visit, and the training she received through the BIR process must have been outstanding because she appeared to be a seasoned veteran. While site team debriefs at the end of the day were a bit more difficult for everyone on the team to express themselves, the team felt all their ideas and concerns were well, well heard and then the institution's strengths and deficit were all well expressed. Team lead Adora Fisher will now review the team's recommendations to the committee. You're muted, Adora. Thank you. Thank you, Bob, and good afternoon, everyone. Um, King's County site visit was a, a 
a really uh, pleasant visit to uh, do. Uh, there was only one program that we were looking at and that was the teacher induction program. Um, the unanimous recommendation of accreditation for Kings County Office of Education was based on a thorough review of all institutional and programmatic information and materials available prior to and during the, the accreditation site visit, including interviews with administrators, faculty, candidates, graduates, and local school personnel. The team obtained sufficient and consistent information that led to a high degree of confidence in making overall and programmatic judgments about the professional education unit's operation. The decision pertaining to the accreditation status of the institution was based upon the following. Preconditions. After reviewing all relevant preconditions, the institution um, has, we have found that the institution has aligned all preconditions for the Kings County Office of Education. Uh, program standards, after review of the institutional report, supporting documentation, completion of interviews with candidates, completers, staff, employers, mentors, and advisory board members. The team determined that all program stand standards are met for the teacher induction program of Kings County Office of Education. Common standards, after reviewing the institutional report, supporting documentation, completion of interviews with candidates, completers, staff, employers, mentors, and advisory board members, the team determined that all common standards are met for the teacher induction program of Kings County Office of Education. The team did find that in standard three, um, one of uh, the elements of standard three was met inconsistently and we did suggest to the Kings County Office of Education that they um, um, take a look at this uh, standard. And that was through site-based work and clinical experiences, programs offered by the unit provide candidates with opportunities to both experience issues of diversity that affect school climate and to effectively implement research-based strategies for improving teaching and student learning. Out of all the program and common standards that we looked at, out of all the candidates, employees, staff, mentors, we found that Kings County Office of Education should be um, recommended for accreditation. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Fisher, Ms. Fisher uh, for your concise um, report and your service. It's greatly appreciated. Uh, at this time, we'd like to provide an opportunity to the institution to briefly comment about the report. I'll remind you that this is not a time to argue the findings of the report, but rather to uh, clarify or uh, comment on the visit itself. All right, so I'm gonna go again. Hello, everyone again. Great, thank you. <laughs> Um, so on behalf of my incredibly hardworking induction team, we wanted to thank the CTC team for their thoroughness throughout this process. And while the process itself is comprehensive and very intense and a bit nerve wracking, to be honest, with the added stress of going digital, um, it did shine a light into every corner of our program. And we all saw the value in that. The one area that did come to light kind of bubbled to the surface a little bit for us through this process we are now taking a deeper dive in, uh, looking at what we can do as a program to better support our newest educators. And if we had not gone through this process, we may not have looked any further into that area. So for that, we are grateful. As a team, we strive to always be in that continuous improvement process, and we do appreciate the constructive criticism. Because of the process, and because of shining a light into the one little area that we felt um, we may not, we may have overlooked, to be honest. Uh, we feel like our educators in Kings County will be even better prepared as they move forward in meeting the needs of all of our students in Kings County. So thank you again for the opportunity. Thank you for your comments. Anybody else there? 
Okay. Um, I'd like to provide an opportunity to the COA to ask any clarifying uh, questions or comment on the visit or the reports. Uh, Member Chikowski and then Member Bolotayo. Yeah, thank you for uh, for being here and for the report. Um, I appreciated the fact that your um, proficiency measures were differentiated for year one and year two and that an ECO and that you were um, on one hand uh, that communicates to me that you have consistent expectations for all the teachers in your program, especially in the wide geographic area that you serve, which I think is key for equity or any attempt to Im Im implement it. So good on you for that. I think that's great while still allowing for um, individual choice and pursuit of goals um, that obviously vary by different by uh, individuals. So thank you for navigating and negotiating those. Um, so sometimes um, they seem conflicting goals. Thank you. Member Balataya? I just have a quick question regarding um, the protocols that you will put in place to address common standards three um, in addressing the inconsistencies with, in that regard. Is that a question for us for, as a program? Yeah. Um, yes, okay. I, I think I froze. I'm sorry. Yeah, I didn't quite understand the question. I, I think, yeah, that you were frozen. Could you repeat it? Oh, yes. I'm sorry again. Um, here it is. What protocols will you put in place to address the inconsistencies you, um, you've encountered with Common Standards 3? So one of the things that we're looking at, uh, we were looking at before the site visit even happened, was putting in place uh, a little more intense training for our mentors and our candidates for um, unbiased training for diversity. Uh, we're going to look, we are looking at actually and putting in place at the beginning of the year with during our orientation for our new candidates and our mentors, the unbiased training. Um, and then as the year progresses, we'll continue to look at that. And we also have our candidates look at the dashboard, um, looking at the information based for their own students, their own student population and how we can address the needs of all students. Thank you. Right, uh, not seeing any other hands raised at this time. This is an action item. Uh, do I have a motion? Member Balotayo? Um, I move that we accept the report and the recommendation of accreditation. Thank you. A second by M Member Fraley. Secretary, can you do a roll call vote, please? Jose Luis Alvarado. Aye. Jermaine Bellatayo? Aye. Kathy Krisha? Aye. Katrina Kachowski? Aye. Cheryl Forbes? Aye. Robert Fraley? Aye. Michael Halis? Aye. Martin Martinez? Aye. Anna Moore? Aye. Gerard Morrison? He votes aye in the chat. Thank you. Iris Ricks? Aye. Motion carries. Congratulations. Well done. Yay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It's just not the same virtually, you know, the eye contact and, <laughs> but we're here. Thank you. All right. That moves us to item 23. Ready to go? Yes. All right. Yes, we are. Thank yes. you. Uh, there's Ms. Solari. All right, the report, uh, item 23 is the report of accreditation team to El Rancho School District. Consultant Dr. Sarah Solari Colombini will introduce this item. Joining her is team lead Jody Schwartzfarb and institutional representative Heather Redding. Does anyone need to recuse themselves? No? Ah, Dr. Solari Colombini, will you begin, please? Certainly. So uh, the El Rancho Unified School District accreditation site visit took place from March 16th through March 18th. The visit was originally planned to be an in-person visit, but on the afternoon of Friday, March 13th, 
district personnel were notified that the Los Angeles area school districts were moving to online instruction and the El Rancho Unified School District was going to follow suit. So between Friday afternoon and Sunday, the program director, Heather Redding, worked to create Google links for each of the interviews that were previously scheduled. I just want it to be noted that these interviews were very well attended. In fact, over 80% of all of the scheduled participants were present at the interviews. Considering that all of this district's personnel were responding to the immediate situation of school closures, I think this was incredible. Therefore, I am confident that the team was able to come to consensus based upon sufficient evidence and under accreditation protocols. Many thanks to the program director for her organization. There was not one technical glitch. And to our team lead, Jody Schwartzfarb, who was able to guide the site visit team through the first post-COVID-19 virtual visit. In addition, our two team members, Tammy Patton and Rhonda Munoz, were extremely flexible and highly adept at conducting this virtual visit. With that, I will let the team lead for this teacher induction site visit, Jody Schwartzfarb, take it from here. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, thank you for allowing me to come and speak on behalf of the El Rancho Unified School District's induction site visit. I'd like to echo Sarah's comments and begin by thanking the team members, Rhonda Munoz and Tammy Patton. With the quick turnaround, I too was dealing with my own classes in my district going to virtual learning. So was juggling a couple of hats right at the beginning. And I would like to thank the team members for stepping forward and being supportive while I was taking care of my local district business. They were both very dedicated and careful in their work. They were prompt, they were invested, and gave everything that they had to the site visit. I'd also like to take a moment and thank Sarah for her support throughout the process. Uh, she clarified information for the team when um, was needed. She would always respond to my texts and emails when I needed support prior to as well as during the visit. And she compiled our report sections in such a timely fashion we were able to get to a final draft um, very early on the third day. Along with what Sarah said, um, Heather Redding is amazing. Uh, the way she put together the visit remotely with the links, um, I'm always finding some glitch somewhere. And as Sarah mentioned, everything went forward smoothly. There were uh, 77 people interviewed overall. Um, there was never an interview where we were wondering who was going to show up. Her level of dedication and appreciation by those involved with the program was very clear by their involvement. Um, her knowledge of Google and how it works I just feel like I need to put a plug. If anyone needs help, Heather should be the person to train you. Um, she was amazing. Um, with her work leading the program, stepping away a bit just from all of her fabulous work, setting up the visit virtually, I'd like to commend her on creating a supportive culture amongst her mentors where they focus on their own growth along with supporting the induction candidates in theirs. Um, with the transition, with our current standards, Heather's been very clear about the program being mentor-based, and this has helped make the transition to what is serving their induction teachers today be so successful. Along, among the candidates, Heather has designed a program which definitely focuses on growth and development. Um, some of the uh, induction teachers commented when they first began and they all got information right away that things seemed overwhelming but with Heather's explanations and guidance and the support from their mentor teachers everything went smoothly. Um, the program is very individualized, it's accessible to candidates and all of those involved had nothing but positive comments to say. Um, I'd like to focus for a moment on some of the comments from the induction candidates about the levels of support they received, both from Heather Redding and their mentors. Um, 
there is endless support from their mentors. We heard from candidates who would sometimes speak with their mentors um, on their car phones, driving in or driving home from school, that mentors would answer texts or emails on the weekends, let alone whatever contact they had during the week. Um, that mentors are their number one supporters. That the program can be summed up in two words, practical and supportive. That it is a platform for reflection. And really with induction, I'm not sure what more we can ask. Um, site administrators responded that they saw growth in their teachers. And that is amazing to hear. Um, teachers from credential areas which I don't want to say are on the outside, but not necessarily the core academic subjects, such as um, music and PE, um, responded with how valuable they saw the program, how well the program met their needs. Um, so it was great to hear this throughout the program. And again, as Sarah said, Heather worked within a weekend, got everything up and running, and her people responded. Um, I do think that is a reflection on her and the culture she has built. So I'd like to um, share that based on documented, documentation reviewed prior to the visit and interviews conducted during the site visit, the team recommends full accreditation for the El Rancho Unified School District Induction Program. Thank you. Thank you so much for your service, years of service, and uh, that wonderful report. Uh, at this time, we'd like to provide uh, Ms. Reddings with the opportunity to um, make comments on the uh, visit or the report. I'll remind you that this is not a time to argue the findings, um, but rather to just some, shed some uh, light and clarification where, um, where is needed. Although it was a very great report, I think we have a, a clear picture of the service you bring uh, to the world of induction. Um, so, the floor is yours. Thank you very much. Can you hear me? Okay, good. Um, I, I almost was brought to tears with that. Thank you so much. When you work so closely with so uh, many indiv wonderful individuals, uh, such as mentors and administrators and new teachers, um, they become very close to your heart and to hear such good things is um, indicative of how uh, much I appreciate them. So I do want to say thank you to Sarah and Jody um, for helping me through my second site visit in, as an induction coordinator and the most um, memorable one I think I'll ever have. Uh, <laughs> it was a quite a turnaround, but um, I'm thankful because um, we've been able to really try to focus on accessibility as uh, Jody mentioned and uh, to do that was to turn to Google as our biggest help for that and making sure that um, everything was online and, and able to, to happen. Um, so I was thankful because I was a little nervous that first day and I didn't hear anything from anyone because um, they were all in their interviews and, and it was great to get that mid-year, mid-visit report and, and to hear that things were going as well as they were. Um, I do want to thank um, uh, the accreditation site visit process um, for helping us every every other year and every seven years to really look at our programs um, to have the data tell us where our improvement needs to be. And I'm super thankful for the shift to our new standards to have it be mentor based because I think um, that has made all the difference for us in our local context um, to have the uh, mentors be the pillars of this program and have their growth be just as important to um, the uh, as well as the teacher growth the new teacher growth to say that we as educators are lifelong learners and that is what makes a good teacher great and accomplished and i love that they are they are role models um as well as as colleagues and and mentors um in our program um so thank you to, thank you to uh, the the coa to um induction to jody and sarah and the site visit team i really do appreciate the experience and, and especially um, our stakeholders and, and our teachers and mentors they appreciate it as well thank you for your comments and your appreciation it's a, it's a great system uh, at this time i'd like to provide the coa with the opportunity to uh, ask clarifying questions or comments on on the report member Chikowski.
Thank you, and congratulations um, on your report. Um, of course, one of the one of the things I just wanted to to call out is the clear respect and honor that you bestow on your mentors. It was like obvious from everything that I was hearing that you um, recognize not only the capacity, the potent, but but also the potential in these people that you hold in high regard, and they obviously know that. So this idea of professional respect and teamwork. Um, seems to be a really important characteristic of your program. And I think that, um, you know, as others mentioned, it, it characterizes the culture of your program, which can't lead anywhere but a good place. So awesome with that. And then I just had a question um, because it seems like a number of induction programs address this uh, differently. And I was really interested in the, in the kind of a side comment that was made about PE and art teachers who felt like their needs were met. I think often, teachers of electives in induction, maybe you don't have the chance to work with people who really get their reality. And man, when you're a choir director or you're a music teacher with six different preps, including marching band and mariachi, and I mean, it's amazing you even survive, huh, Bob? Um, it's amazing. These people are like, like incredible survivors, not to mention workers of magic. So I guess my question was just, you know, it, in a couple sentences, how do you engender that content match between the mentor and the candidate? Because I've found in our program, I, do, I have an induction program too, that's essential. Like we can't have candidates working with mentors who don't teach what they teach. Like how could that work? Yet other programs do that. So can you say something about that briefly? Because I know that we're, you know. I know, over it. I would love to say something <laughs> about that. <laughs> um, thank you. Uh, the, I think that um, we've learned a lot about this. Um, so our district, first off, has moved to um, magnet type schools where uh, all teachers have choice as to where they can send their kids because we're a small district. And they, because of that, we've had, we've focused on VAPA, um, and as a few schools have done that, so they've brought in full time uh, music teachers, even down to the lower levels into your K five school as well as the middle and the high school. And that's where our new teachers have been. Uh, interestingly enough, we have not ever been able to match a music teacher to a music teacher with the mentor. But what we have done is I've taken, um, the good thing about it is I, I do celebrate mentors and their uh, years of experience. So I took my most experienced mentor who we've trained a lot over the years about uh, good teaching is good teaching, but as well as what's the difference between a performance-based curriculum versus a, an academic-based uh, curriculum in the sense of, you know, paper, pencil, and, and your, your core subjects. And we really have tried to see with my, my older, my, not my older, my more veteran mentors that there is a difference on how you mentor the, your performance-based teachers, that they have other needs um, that are not exact to that of, of your math or your science or your language arts. Um, and so with that, um, we've learned together with my, um, my veteran uh, mentors who I have specifically assigned to those performance-based uh, teachers uh, to say, you know what, you, you have the experience as a mentor to adjust your mentoring to their needs in their curricular area. And that really has helped because we've talked a lot about how we, like you just said, and it was perfectly stated, that we've never taught this before. We don't have a credential in this. So you need to tell me with your, with your uh, degree and your expertise in that curricular area, in that performance-based area, how you think you're going to uh, accomplish what you're hoping to accomplish. And so our mentors are really good at that guided, that guided practice and, and discussion about helping them reflect and helping them feel like they're the expert in the room and not feel like they're talked down to because I'm a veteran teacher, even though I've never taught it you know, you need to listen to me. It really, uh, mentoring really has gotten to a point, especially with my more veteran ones, that it's, it's, you can be a great mentor regardless of that match. And they've, it, it's taken practice for these mentors to get to there, but now they've gotten to it and it's reflected in, in the conversation or the interviews that were had. And, and we're thankful for that because we were always concerned because you need, you should be concerned going in when there's not an exact match. So that's where our focus has been on how do we get to our, our mentor skills up here so that we can still mentor even when there's not a match? I'll stop talking. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, great. Thank you. Uh, any other questions or comments? All right.
right. Um, I, this is an action item. Could I please get a motion? I'll get a motion by member Forbes, please. I move that we accept the team report and the recommendation of accreditation. And a second. I member Frelly. Uh, Secretary, please do a roll call vote. Jose Luis Alvarado. Aye. Cynthia, oh, I'm sorry, Jolene Bellatayo. Aye. Kathy Krisha. Aye. Krishna Kachowski. Aye. Cheryl Forbes. Aye. Robert Frelly. Aye. Michael Hillis. Aye. Martin Martinez. Aye. Anna Moore. Aye. Gerard Morrison. Aye. Aye in the chat. Iris Riggs. Aye. Aye. Terrific. Motion carries and congratulations. Yay. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much. Have a great afternoon. Okay. Um, I'm wondering, do we need a five minute stretch break or do you want to carry on? Five minute stretch break. Okay. We will reconvene at 2.15. All right, everybody, we're on the home stretch here. Just uh, waiting for a couple of other folks to join us. Kathy says she's here. We're looking, waiting for Katrina and Gerald. I think Jerry's there. Is he? I'm just not seeing this picture, but. Yeah, I can see his picture, but he looks, might be frozen again. Or he's very. Oh, I see him on twice right now. He's got two different things going. He does have a dual personality. <laughs> Is that, who's opening a beer? <laughs> I'm sorry, it was. I'm not a spokesman, I just like the product. <laughs> Okay. Sorry about that. I thought it was muted. I'm mute. Okay. Are we ready to go? All right. Item 24, report of the follow-up interviews to the University of Laverne. Administrator Terry Clark will introduce this item, and joining her is team lead Dr. Edmund Amundo Litton. Does anyone need to recuse themselves? No? All right. Thank you. Ms. Clark? Good afternoon. So at your March meeting, you had a report on the site visit that took place in February to the University of Laverne. And that was an in-person site visit. Those were the days. And at that report, the team had recommended that for two of the credential programs at Laverne, the interviews had been insufficient for the team to come to decisions on the findings for the standards. That would be the preliminary administrative services program and the early, this education specialist early childhood special ed added authorization program. And so the recommendation from the team that you see on your agenda on the first page of your item is that additional interviews should take place. And the reason the team was so specific that the additional interviews should take place quickly was so that we could, the team could confirm that the program really is meeting the standards before completers finish this spring. So Dr. Litton and I did a number of interviews. The institution pulled together people and I will let Dr. Litton explain the findings from those interviews. Yes, good afternoon. Um, thank you, Terry. Um, so we, Terry Clark and I did the interviews over two weeks and we did meet with candidates and completers as specified in the agenda. You can tell how many we actually spoke to. Um, some were conducted in groups, some were done individually. But the bottom line is candidates actually and completers actually had to say, had very good things to say about the program. So we felt that what uh, candidates and completers actually confirmed that the program design as described by the faculty and the syllabus meet the standards 
Therefore, we are recommending that uh, findings to the standards be changed from met with concerns to met. And then we're also recommending that the stipulations four and five be removed, but uh, um, accreditation remain the same as accreditation with major stipulations. Thank you. Okay, thank you, uh, uh, Mr. Litton. At this time, we'd like to provide the institutional representatives to uh, say a few words about the report. Hello, everyone. Kimberly White-Smith, I'm the Dean of the LaFetra College of Education at the University of Laverne. Um, I just want to uh, first thank um, uh, Terry Clark and um, Dr. Litton uh, for their flexibility with regards to the follow-up. Um, obviously, when this was set up, we had no idea um, what uh, COVID would bring, and um, they were just so generous uh, with their time um, in supporting the follow-up for this so that we could be done um, within the uh, time frame. So thank you so much, and I appreciate that. Um, I want to say that this has been an extremely helpful process um, to us. We are a university that is trying to move um, into uh, what next generation learning and teaching can and, and shall be. And with COVID-19 um, here at our door, it's moving even faster than we had anticipated. And um, the initial pieces of these two um, um, uh, uh, programs, authorizations, um, uh, credentials uh, um, ha slipped uh, between the cracks as we were uh, exchanging leadership in both our SPED program and our ed leadership program. And so, um, you know, this has been, like I said, an extremely helpful process to us to kind of shed light on old processes and updating new processes uh, so that these types of things won't happen. So thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, anybody else? Ms. Johnson, did you want to say a few words? No? You're okay. <laughs> I understand. All right. Um, I'd like to, uh, this, this is an action item, and at this time, we need a motion, and Ms. Hickey, uh, the motion would be to accept the report, leaving the accreditation of, uh, accreditation with major stipulations in place. Would that be acceptable? Correct, but removing the two stipulations, I think that um, Dr. Litton mentioned. That are outlined in the report. Right. Okay. So, thank you, Member Forbes. I move that we accept the team's recommendation that we remove stipulations four and five and that the accreditation decision will remain accreditation with major stipulations. Beautiful. Second by Member Alvarado. Uh, Secretary, please do a roll call vote. Jose Luis Alvarado. Aye. Jomeline Belcayo. Aye. Kathy Krisha? Aye. Katrina Kachowski? Aye. Cheryl Forbes? Aye. Robert Felly? Aye. Michael Hillis? Aye. Martin Martinez? Aye. Anna Moore? Aye. Gerard Morrison? Aye. Iris Riggs? Aye. Motion carries. All right, well, we'll look forward to hearing from you in the future um, and go forth, do great work. And you've been launched, as you said, <laughs> into the future of education through this process. All right, take care. Thank you for joining us. All right, that takes us to item 25. A lot of items in this day. Um, discussion of the COA meeting dates for 2021. Administrator Cheryl Hickey will present this item. Ms. Hickey, will you begin, please? Certainly. So as this item mentions, this was originally going to be an action item for you um, um, with a discussion of the 2021 uh, uh, possible meeting dates. However, given the COVID situation, um, you know, it made it more, a little bit more complicated to, to kind of figure out what institute, which, which, 
um, organizations were going to continue to have their their conferences and things like that. So I, I thought maybe we'll put it on for a discussion, and then we can bring it back to you in June. It, you know, to see if things kind of settle out a little bit more. Um, we are proposing um, a, a set of dates, and we thought we might want to talk to you. In the past, you had preferred Thursday, Fridays. We're asking you again whether you would like to continue that. I know some of you had some issues with Thursdays this past year, so um, I just want to raise that as something that we could talk about because, you know, staff is here every day, so it doesn't matter to us what day it is. Um, Mondays tend to be a little bit hard for us um, to have everything prepared, but um, generally we could do it, you know, any of the days. Um, and so you could reconsider that if you want. We do finally, as of this morning, have the Committee of Credentials, I think, um, more tentative dates. Um, but conferences are still up in the air, as you all know, um, with your professional organizations. So I don't know if these are going to continue. I don't know if they are going to happen in a virtual setting. Um, and I was hoping that maybe we can collect a little bit more information by your June meeting. Um, so I just opened that up for any sort of discussion you want to have, and we're happy to bring it back for um, for action at the June meeting. Okay, just wave your hand if you want to talk or... Yes, Member Hellis. The only uh, <clears throat> um, thing that I was looking at on the list of conferences um, was AACTE wasn't listed. Okay. Um, and that's... Uh, at the end of February, February 25th and 6th. Um, I went to their website, it's listed right now, but you know, we'll see what happens. Okay, that sounds great. Member Forbes. I just had a question about page four, and I'm perfectly willing to accept that I'm in a time warp, but did we adopt something on June 27th of 2020? Oh, no, that was adopted June of uh, 2019. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Good catch on a typo. Thank you very much for that. Yes, I know. Anything's possible right now, right? Everything's an alternate okay. reality. Well, that's why I asked. Otherwise, I would have not. Yeah, that should say 19. Um, and I don't know if there's anything else that stands out to anybody in terms of definitely not do it that week because something else big is Member Member Alvarado? Yeah, on um, the August 3rd one, given I mean, where everything is going in this state, the, the possibility that it's going to be a teleconference is like 99%. <laughs> True. Probably commit to that. Sure, um, sure. And, and I will say that... Um, I just letting you know ahead of time, um, that's my first day starting at Cal State LA. So I probably didn't miss that meeting. Wow, congratulations. Yes. In order for sure. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. We're changing the balance of the Northern Southern California representation here on the commission or the COA. So, okay. All right, we will definitely um, fix that in terms of possibly. We also do believe that the June meeting will be um, like this as well. All right, what about the Thursday, Friday days? Did anybody have an opinion or anything on that? For me, there. Oh. Bob, you're muted. There you go. Yeah, um, I was going to say I can wait, but it's for me, uh, Tuesdays or Thursdays would always be bad, but I can make an adjustments for that. That just happens to be rehearsal days, and so those are the hardest ones to get out of, but I, you know, I'll do it like we did in the past. I'll do what we need to to make it happen. Okay. Member Alvarado? Um, well, for my current position, I would say that Thursday, Friday work best. I'm expecting that that will still be the same for my new position. Um but I'll certainly confirm that once I start. Okay. okay. Everybody else Thursday, Fridays are okay? Okay, great, lots of thumbs up, okay, great. All right, well, we're happy to, and if something, if you learn about something in the next um, few weeks, please email it to us so that we have the latest and greatest information. Things are changing so quickly, so thank All you. Right. We'll bring it back. All right, thank you.
Uh, Ms. Hickey. Uh, all right, that takes us to item 26, which is the discussion of CTC and American Speech Language Hearing Association Program Standards Crosswalk. Administrator Terry Clark and consultant William Hetrick will present this item. Ms. Clark and Mr. Hetrick, will you begin, please? Let me set the context and then I'll turn it over to William to do the specifics on the CTC ASHA crosswalk. The education code gives the committee the authority to determine if something is equivalent to the commission's standards. That's one of the rights that you as a committee have. And you have done this a number of times. You've done it a long time ago with the commission's common standards and with the NCATE standards and you adopted a crosswalk. You've done it with the commission standards and the new CAPE standards. You've done it with the commission's st common standards and the AQIP standards. It's also been done for a number, number of professional associations. There's an alignment matrix with NAS, the National Association of School Psychologists. There's an alignment matrix with KCREP for the School Counselors Association. And there's been an alignment with ASHA for the speech language pathology for a number of years. And um, William was doing some looking at things and brought some things were brought to our attention that we need to do some updating to this matrix. So that's where William enters the story. Thank you, Terry, for that background. Yeah, good afternoon, committee members. Uh, this is basically some revisions that I found that are needed to just bring the uh, standards crosswalk from CTC and ASHA into alignment with the current speech language pathology standard language. Um, so if you're looking at those eight standards, the first three, um, no edits needed because they are fully addressed by the ASHA standards. And then four through eight had some edits there that are in red, um, strike through. And then the addition of some language in SLP standard six with completing the equivalent of a semester or quarter of field experience in the schools. And I'd also add that the preliminary SLP programs also are required to meet the uh, education specialist program design standards one through eight. So they have those uh, more common program standards for all special ed programs that they have to meet. And then these are their specialty area specific ones uh, for speech language pathology. So the recommendation is that these changes be adopted and then we can go ahead and get the crosswalk document uh, updated for programs to utilize from here on forward. And I wanna point out one more reason that this alignment matrix is very important is that the speech language pathology program is the one type of educator preparation program that it is required by law that it is also accredited by ASHA. The other options, it is optional. The California program may choose to be accredited by the National Association or not. It, it's their choice. But the speech language pathology um, groups in California and the, the, a bill was a number of years ago and a speech language pathology program must be accredited by ASHA. The individual must get a master's degree from an ASHA accredited institution when they get their license, their credential. Okay, thank you. I appreciated the document. Um, it made it really easy to understand what we were trying to compare and uh, I appreciated that you showed the work with the different colored fonts. That was really nice. Um, this is an action item, but are there any questions or comments that you all might have? I have the experts in the room. So would we make a motion then to accept the changes as noted in this crosswalk? Yes. Okay, we have a motion by Member Alvarado. I move that uh, we accept the changes as proposed in the document shared with us. And we have a second by Member Frally. Secretary, could you please do a roll call vote? Jose Luis Alvarado. Aye. Jomeline Balatayo. Jomeline. Jomeline Balatayo. Aye. Like, it looks like she's frozen right now. Aye. Got oh, it. There you go. Kathy yeah. Krisha. Katrina Kachowski? Aye. Cheryl Forbes? Aye. Robert Felly? Aye. Michael Hillis? 
Aye. Martin Martinez. Aye. Anna Moore. Aye. Jerome Morrison. Okay, got an aye. And Iris Riggs. Aye. Well, terrific. Uh, motion carries. Well done, Mr. Hattrick and Ms. Clark. Thank you very much. Okay. We are on to, let's see, we have a time certain at 2.45. Are Western Governors University, are they here? They are. They are. Mm -hmm. Can we move on? Move on to this? Sure. Yes? yes. Wonderful. And Erin, you're ready to go. Okay. That uh, the report of actions taken by Western Governors University to address the stipulations. Administrator Erin Sullivan will introduce this item. Joining her are institutional representatives, Dr. Werner Lowe, Senior Manager, and James Kozinski, Regional Manager, Academic Engagement for Educator Preparation, and Dr. Dan Peterson, Director, College Compliance, Academic Engagement. Does anyone need to recuse themselves? Yeah. Ms. Sullivan, will you begin, please? I will. Thank you. Um, I used to be batting cleanup, I guess, here today at the end of the meeting. Uh, I also think it's, uh, was sitting here today listening to everybody talk about doing these um, virtual site visits, and I was thinking that, hmm, the last two site visits I've done through no, no fault of COVID at all have been these sort of virtual site visits. Um, and I'll tell you, even when you plan for it, it it's uh, the first time you do something like that as a, as a site visit consultant, it, it can be a little... Um, uh, disconcerting is not the right word, but you know, you just things are different. So, um, who knew it was going to be so prescient? So, today I am bringing you the report of the actions that Western Governors University has taken to address stipulations from their site visit. Um, the report of their site visit was presented to the COA at your April 2019 meeting. The site visit team recommended accreditation with stipulations. Based on findings that program standard three was met with concerns for the multiple and single subject programs, and that common standards two and three were also met with concerns. The team's recommended stipulations were that within one year of the visit, the institution submit a report, including evidence, that verifies that host teachers are completing 10 hours of training that include all the content required by the commission's adopted standards, that the institution's plan for purposeful recruitment and admission of candidates had been implemented and evaluated for effectiveness. Um, this stipulation was worded in this way because the institution had already identified through the accreditation activities that leading up to the site visit that this was an area for improvement for them and had already sort of begun um, examining how best to address this issue. The final item identified by the site visit team to be addressed in the report was that the members of the institution's California P12 Council be selected and that the council had commenced meeting for the purposes of informing the WGU Teachers College. Following the presentation of the report and discussion by the committee, an additional item was added requiring the institution to provide clear information about the length of its program as well as clear data on the number of candidates who complete the program in that expected length of time. As the consultant to the visit, the institution discussed with me their plans for addressing these stipulations immediately following the meeting in April. Lines of communication were open between the institution and myself throughout the year. And in early, 20, uh, early April 2020, the institution submitted to me a thorough, well-organized um, report with evidence that clearly demonstrated the steps they had taken to address the stipulations and the institution's own evaluation of the efficacy of its efforts and any mod modifications that they had taken to help strengthen their efforts. Following an analysis of their report and discussions with institutional representatives, staff's recommending that the institution's accreditation status be changed from accreditation with stipulation to accreditation. And we have institutional representatives here, as um, Coach Moore explained, and they are happy to answer any questions that you may have at MI. Thank you, Ms. Sullivan, for that terrific report. Uh, we now invite the institutional representatives to briefly comment about the report. James, would you like to do that? Sure. Um, 
First, I just want to say that um, we really um, kind of embraced and appreciated the stipulations that were provided to us, including the stipulation from the committee that was given to us last year, because um, it really allowed us further insight into what we needed to do to continue to improve our programs. And I think that um, the report that we provided to Aaron Sullivan last month showed that. Um, we really spent a lot of time uh, narrowing down, making sure that our host teachers get the training that they need, um, making sure that there is purposeful recruitment, making sure that our P-12 council includes members from all over the state, and um, providing clear information to everybody that needs it on um, the number of candidates who complete our program in the expected length of time and how long that expected length of time is for prospective candidates. So um, I just want to say thank you again. It's been a privilege, as always, to be able to have Erin Sullivan as a consultant for us because um, her guidance and uh, information that she provides is, is priceless, essentially. And again, I want to say thank you to this um, committee because really it has allowed us in a, in a program that strives for continuous improvement, always like all of our programs do across the state, um, that these stipulations allowed us to continue to do that. So thank you. Thank you for your comments. Uh, anybody else from the institution? I would just like to echo what James has said and to say that we've appreciated the uh, advice and guidance from uh, Aaron. And also that um, this was just a very good opportunity for us to learn even more about how to better serve California and to prepare teachers in California. And so we are just very thankful for the privilege of being able to do so. Terrific. Thank you. All right. Um, this is an action item. Uh, at this time, uh, I'd be happy to take a motion if somebody would like to give it a whirl. <laughs> I'm going to call on somebody. <laughs> okay. Member Forbes. Thank you. <laughs> okay, I'm on a roll. I, um, I move that we accept this, the recommendation to remove all stipulations and to change the accreditation status from accreditation with stipulations to accreditation. And a second by Member Hellas. Uh, Secretary, please do a roll call vote. Jose Luis Alvarado. Aye. Jemeline Bilotayo. Aye. Kathy Krisha. Katrina Kachowski. Aye. Cheryl Forbes. Aye. Robert Belly. Aye. Michael Hillis. Aye. Martin Martinez. Aye. Anna Moore. Aye. Jordan Morrison. Aye. Iris Riggs. Aye. Motion carries. Congratulations and thank you, Ms. Sullivan and the representatives, uh, Dr. Lowe, Ms. Mr. Kosinski, Dr. Peterson, and uh, have a terrific day. Thank you very much. Nice. And congratulations on your new position, Member Alvarado. <laughs> <laughs> yep. All right. Take no. care. Thank you. All right. We're doing great. Right now we have um, item 28, uh, which is the nomination of co-chairs for 2021. Administrator Cheryl Hickey will introduce this item. Ms. Hickey, will you begin, please? Yes, so item 28 is the nomination of the co-chairs for 2021. It's not the nomination and election, it's only the nominations. For the past couple of years, we have sort of been doing it um, a little bit differently than our procedures manual tell us to, mostly because of the time um, that we needed for the site visit um, report. So um, we're trying to get us back to what our procedures manual actually says, which basically says that the, the second to the last meeting of the year, and our year is an academic year or a fiscal year. Um, we do a nominations. We leave the nominations open till the next uh, meeting, which would be the last meeting. And at that meeting, we um, ask for additional nominations if there are any, and we close the nominations and we do the elections. So bringing it back in accordance with our um, procedures manual. So in a moment, um, I'm going to open the nominations for co-chairs for the COA. I'll ask for nominations for both the K-12 co-chair position and the higher education position. Uh, the nominations process will then remain open until the next meeting, which is June, at which time I'll ask whether there are any, any additional nominations. And then at the June meeting, prior to voting, 
I'll officially close the nominations and then we'll move immediately to a vote. Um, um, any member of the COA is eligible. And what I did forget to mention to you, and it's an important thing to mention at the beginning um, during the staff reports, is that the commission did reappoint two, two members and appointed a new member. So I meant to met, I apologize to the two members that are here, Cheryl Forbes and Jerry Morrison, you've both been reappointed. Um, so I wanted to make sure that that's on record. Um, and, the, and Iris Riggs, since it's the end of her term and she's not eligible for another term, we're very sad about that. Um, so um, Lynn Larson, right here. She's, she's here, she can say something. To say. Um, Lynn Larson of Brandman University will um, take the, the uh, higher ed position that is vac being vacated by Iris Riggs. So, um, and we'll begin um, as of July 1 for, ne for the next four years. Um, so, um, any member of the COA is eligible, and as the item says, the procedure manual limits the co-chair's position to two one-year terms. However, this may be waived by a majority of vote of the COA, so should you wish to do so. Um, both Dr. Frelly and Dr. Moore have served their maximum time period in accordance with the procedures manual, but of course, as I said, this is your procedures manual, so you just need, if they were to, be, one or more of those were to be your chosen person, you can uh, waive the procedures manual um, by a majority of vote. So um, the other piece of this is the nominee must be willing to serve. <laughs> so um, hopefully they will be. Um, and with that, is there any questions about the process? Oh, looks good. So I'm going to now open the nominations process. Do I have any nominations for, let's start with the K-12 co-chair. Any nominations for that person? Oh, everybody's quiet. Okay, Cheryl Forbes. This is my day to make motions, I guess. Well, <laughs> I move, and I didn't ask permission, but I move that we waive the manual, the procedures, and re-elect Anna Moore. Okay. Anna, would you be willing to serve? I guess I need to ask that. Thank you, Cheryl. Um, yes, I would. I second that. What was that, Jerry? Second. <laughs> she seconds the motion. Okay. Any second the motion. I third the motion. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Are there any other nominations for the K-12 position? Okay. Um, it'll stay open again, like I said, to the next meeting in case there are any additional thoughts. Um, and then now I will ask for nominations for the higher education position. Any nominations there? Then I would, um, Mike Kellis. Yeah, I would actually um, also like to nominate um, and waive our procedures and have Bob continue in the role for another year. All right. And Bob, are you willing to serve? Yeah, absolutely. This is uh, one of the highlights of my career. I enjoy working with everybody. You just, it's a fantastic team. So yeah, absolutely. Okay. Any other nominations? All right, well, I will keep it open and at the next meeting, we'll come back we will close the nominations and then we will, um, um, in order for Anna and Bob to get in, you'll have to actually vote twice, once to waive your manual and the second time to um, vote them into office, so. Okay, and just commenting on John Lynn, I promise. Oh, you want more dad jokes, okay. <laughs> we want more jokes. Okay. I don't, I, I, <laughs> Thank you so much, everybody. It's really, um, it's an honor and a privilege just to be nominated. I too, like Bob, this, this is uh, an amazing um, opportunity, especially this coming year with all the changes that we're going to see in education. And uh, it is my last year um, in my two four-year terms. So it's a nice way to end my term on the COA. So thank you. Okay. okay. All right, uh, thank you, Ms. Hickey. And Cheryl, I believe you said you had a few things to share with us today. 
Well, I just had one thing. I just wanted to make sure. Iris, are you here for the next meeting? Okay, great. So I, that will be Iris's last term. And unfortunately, we won't be together, so we can't like take her out to dinner or something like that, which will make me very sad. Um, but the other thing I wanted to mention is that um, those of you who know Katie Croy, she will be retiring this summer. So today was her, her last accreditation site visit report to the COA. So I just wanted, she'll be with us in June, but we just wanted to acknowledge that was her last site visit. Katie. Hey, Katie. <laughs> Hi, I'm going to cry already. <laughs> years and years of service. You are amazing. Oh, miss your smiling face. Well, I'm glad you're going to miss me. It would make me real sad if you didn't miss me a little bit. <laughs> yeah, a lot of it. <laughs> exactly. And then we want to cross our fingers because Terry's going to be a grandma any minute now. Oh, my goodness. Wow. Wow. Is, this, is this her first first Cheryl it, it is the first oh Terry you're here I'm here again I've been here the whole time I just turn off the camera sometimes yes my daughter was due on Monday so we're t we're past the countdown uh -huh. wow congratulations yeah so exciting your life is gonna change I'm so looking forward to it <laughs> and that's right. it I just um, want to make sure we got those announcements in Okay, thank you. So, uh, public comment. Does anybody, any member of the public, have anything it wishes to say? Please yeah. raise your hand in the Zoom feature, or we will wait a moment to see if we have anyone indicating they wish to speak in the chat function. There, there's no one in the attendee area. Everyone on the meeting is a panelist at the moment. Okay. Um, all right. We had over seventy, though. We had over seventy people at one time. Wow, that's amazing, Cheryl. I was just going to say, um, Commissioner Rodriguez missed our discussion this morning because she was on a staff meeting, but we did talk about the commission meeting, um, Commissioner Rodriguez. I don't know if you want to just say a couple of words about that and all of the COVID changes. We, we went through them in pretty good depth here, but you might want to just say something since we still have you. Are you, like, specifically some of the waivers and the power, the authority that was given to the accreditation programs? Yes, we talked yes. about all of those specific things. But, yeah, if you had any other thoughts, that'd be great. Um, no, just, you know, that, I mean, I, I want to say that as a liaison, um, I think that the Committee on Accreditation, and I mentioned this, you guys hear, the minute I go off mute, somebody has to bark, um, that, you know, one of the things that I mentioned at the meeting is how much confidence I have in the on the committee on accreditation and uh, you know your your leadership your uh, you know uh, all of the staff and the consultants that during these changes uh, to accreditation um, as they're you know related to COVID-19 um, that they will be handled uh, incredibly well by you know such an incisive thoughtful team of educators as yourself who are um, you know going to be going through a lot of these accreditation reports and um, making sure that the that that the schools of education are producing teachers who are prepared to go out and uh, work with our students right especially given all of the changing times and and you know just to add something on my own as a teacher and um being part of all of this uh, i heard one of the uh, one of the last um uh speakers you know who talked about how now we're you know with preparing the people online we're even doing so much more uh because of what's happening you know what what, what we're doing with our schools and our students right now for our teachers. And it just seems to me that one of the habits of mind that's so important is that flexibility, um, you know, and, and being able to make sure that our schools of education are, uh, you know, we talk a lot about having the heart for teaching, all of that is very important, but we have to stay flexible and, you know, and make sure that we can adjust to a lot of these changes because just right now with the scheduling, right, we don't know what's gonna be happening and how, things are going to change and if we'll be meeting in this format at the next time. So um, again, you know, I, uh, I just want to say that it's, uh, I, I have shared with the commission the tremendous confidence that I have in all of you to guide us through this process. 
and to make sure that the, that the schools of education are doing their part to train the teachers um, to get them ready for the classrooms. So thank you. Thank you so much for all of the work that you do. I, I always leave our meetings more and more impressed. So did I cover everything, Cheryl? I, I hope. Okay. Your comments are very kind and appreciated. Um, Heidi, really appreciate it and your confidence. Um, we will try to do our best to hold on to that and maintain it. Yeah. Uh, uh, before we go, before I adjourn, are we, do we want to stay on after? Do we need to do that? No, you're not. Thank you. So, okay, then um, I want to see everybody here in June. I want to see your faces. So wash your hands, practice social distancing and uh, shelter in place until, until we're released. Um, reach out anytime and having no further business. I adjourn the May 2020 meeting of the Committee on Accreditation. The next meeting um, will be June 25th, 26th, 2020, we hope. All right. And, and again, a big hearty congratulations to Dr. Alvarado on his new position. It's yep. tremendous. Don't forget us. <laughs> All right. Bye-bye, everybody.